Some of my content has mention of extreme violence, sexual assault, and or other triggering content. Discretion is advised. Kelsey Ann Smith was from Overland Park, Kansas. She had just graduated Shawnee Mission West High School. She planned to go to K-State in the fall. She was going to play in the marching band. She played clarinet. The day everything happened to this young girl, she just went to Target. Normal, completely innocent, something we do on a regular basis. This Target store was less than 10 minutes from her home, but she never came back from the store that day. So let me tell you the tragic story of Kelsey Ann Smith. Hi, welcome or welcome back to my channel, Dark Enigmas, where I talk about all the mysteries that are on the darker side. Kelsey Ann Smith's case was suggested to me by someone who watches my videos. Um, and I knew about this case. I think everyone in Kansas, Missouri <laughs> knew this case, um, but it was back in 2007. So I needed a refresher. And when I started researching Kelsey's case, it hit me like a ton of bricks. I could have been Kelsey. I think anybody could have been Kelsey. Kelsey is my pretty much exact age. Um, I had just graduated this that year and she is such a normal, normal girl. And this happened and it shook everyone. This was a crime of complete opportunity and it's scary. This case is terrifying. More than a lot of other cases that I've done and I've done bad, bad, bad cases. This one scares me to my core because it could be anybody. The fact that it happened to Kelsey that day, it literally could have been anyone else. And it just happened to be Kelsey. And it very well could have been me. And it's just terrifying to think of that. So I told you a little bit about Kelsey. She was a pretty normal girl. Like I said, she went to Shawnee Mission West. She had just graduated and she was so happy in every picture. I mean, she's beautiful and she just looked so radiant. So this particular day, Kelsey was celebrating her six month anniversary with her boyfriend. And so she went to Target to get him a present. And she did not come home, which raised a lot of alarm bells in her parents' minds. Kelsey's dad was a law enforcement officer. And so when she didn't come home, it was very scary. She always came home, it scared him. And yeah, it just wasn't like her at all. So Kelsey was last seen at 7.07 .07 p.m. on June 2nd, 2007 in the parking lot of the Target store at 97th and Quivira behind the Oak Park Mall in Overland Park, Kansas. The amount of times that I have went to Oak Park Mall it's just astounding. It's astounding. I probably went to that store numerous times, but it's just crazy. So um, surveillance video from that Target showed Kelsey purchasing a present for her boyfriend. Um, and her last call had been while she was at the store and she was talking to her mom. She was just kind of walking around the store, just very normal, picking things out and talking to her mom on the phone. So she left the store and then she just disappeared. 
Um, approximately four hours later, her car, which was a 1987 Buick Regal, was found abandoned in the Macy's parking lot across the street from that Target. Now, her car being found didn't raise a ton of alarm bells, but they did notice her purse, her wallet, all the items that she bought were all left in the car. That signals something is wrong when that happens. So immediately people were very, very worried about Kelsey. Now, fortunately for us, Target stores in 2007 had surveillance footage. And the surveillance footage is pretty clear. Um, it shows Kelsey parking her car, interest entering the store, calling her mother, and selecting all the items that were later found in the car. However, while it, this surveillance camera was watching Kelsey, it was also watching someone else. A man. This man was white and in his early 20s, he was wearing a white shirt and dark shorts. He entered the store about 30 seconds after Kelsey had entered. Um, the man, as they followed the surveillance video, he was in every aisle that Kelsey was in. However, she didn't notice him. He stayed a pretty, like, like a distance where he could still watch her, but she was oblivious to him being there. So as they're watching the surveillance video back, they see this male stalking Kelsey, basically stalking her um, in every aisle, just watching her and waiting. The man didn't talk to Kelsey, didn't um, approach her at all, um, but he left when Kelsey went to check out. So she went up to the counter and he just dodged it out of there. The footage captured a clear, clear photo of him leaving the Target store. The police reviewed and reviewed and reviewed this video, um, trying to figure out who he is, what he was doing, and if this he was involved in this crime. Um, the video at first did not show anything unusual, but when it slowed down, you could clearly see a flash in the direction of Kelsey's car. Consistent with someone running up to her car as she was trying to get in her own car. And this man pushed her in her own car and drove away. The outside of the Target store footage um, showed a suspicious 1970s era Chevrolet truck leaving the lot as well, which was also found there entering just before Kelsey went into the store as well. The Macy's surveillance footage, which was across the street where, where uh, Kelsey's car was found, showed that her car had been left there at 9.17 p.m. Now this is about two hours after it left the Target store. A figure in a white shirt, dark pants, was seen leaving the vehicle and running towards the street. Now it was too dark at that time to determine whether it was male or female, but the person's clothing matched to a T. So, um, the video of the man was released to the public. This was police saying, hey, do you guys know this person? We need to talk to them, whether they're a suspect or not. Now, this going out to the media generated hundreds of tips. A lot of them were very general, and so they could not be used. But there were some tips that came in that were incredibly good for police officers. One of them being that this guy sitting at work saw this news broadcast, looked at his coworker, looked outside in the parking lot, and, it, and realized 
that's the truck that's on the TV. And that's you in that surveillance video. When he asked his coworker, hey, is that your car, man? Like, is that you that's on the news? His coworker got very cagey and said he was sick and left. Now, the police didn't waste any time. They checked this whole car, all of Kelsey's car, for evidence. Um, they took fingerprints and they isolated those fingerprints to being no one that should be in the car. So they tested this seatbelt and it wasn't Kelsey's fingerprints, wasn't her boyfriend, her parents, anybody that she knew. This was an unknown fingerprint on Kelsey's seatbelt. So this was when the search was on. They had to find Kelsey and they had to find the man that was in this video, surveillance video. Now, very unfortunately, Kelsey's body was found near a lake in Missouri on June 6th, 2007. Um, now, this is where it gets extremely, extremely sad. Because the ball was dropped by people. So, Kelsey had her phone on her and they knew that, the police knew that they could follow those pings. However, in 2007, there was not a law in place saying that a phone ping in an investigation had to be turned over to law enforcement. So the cell phone company that Kelsey's phone was under Basically, the law said you could give it to them or you could not. Like, it just depends on you. And this phone company, unfortunately, said we're not going to give you the phone pings. And they waited and waited and waited. And finally, 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 they gave over where these this cell phone was pinging from. And when the cops went to where... They, the cell phone had pinged within a couple mile radius, they found Kelsey's body. So if they would have given over those phone pings, we could have found what was happening to Kelsey way before. I don't know if we could have saved her in this instance, but it was vital for that information to happen and it never did. On June 6th, like I said, at 1.30 p.m., searchers discovered Kelsey's body 20 miles um, from where she had been abducted at that target. She was in a wooded area covered with brush. The investigation took off from there, and the autopsy revealed that Kelsey's cause of death was strangulation. Kelsey had been strangled with her own belt. The autopsy also showed that she had been sexually assaulted. While all of this was going on with the investigation, a woman called in a tip that she believed the footage of the man in Target was of her neighbor. He matched and the truck matched, and so she called it in as a tip. On the evening of June 6th, 2007, police arrested 26-year-old Edwin Roy Jack Hall of Olathe, Kansas. Now, Hall was in the process of leaving town with his wife and son because they were going on vacation when police arrived. So he was about to get out of Dodge. He had seen on the news that they knew where he was so he was about to book it out of Kansas for sure. So the cops took his fingerprints and it matched back to Kelsey's seatbelt. It was a slam dunk. They had footage of him stalking Kelsey in a Target and his fingerprints on the belt in her car. So they brought him in on June 7th with premeditated first degree murder and aggravated kidnapping. What's interesting about Hall is that he had no adult criminal record. However, he had a lengthy child 
um, juvenile record um, in the state for assault. Hall, who had been adopted at the age of seven, had been returned to state custody at the age of 15 after he threatened the family's daughter with a knife. He also assaulted another boy by striking him in the head with a baseball bat. Police don't believe that Hall knew Kelsey at all. Um, he was a married father of a four-year-old son. He admitted to being at Target, but claimed he never approached Kelsey. However, he was caught in a lie when those fingerprints matched him. So Hall was booked and he was set on that $5 million bond. On August 11th, a grand jury convicted him of murder, rape, and aggravated sodomy. The charges made Hall ineligible for the death penalty, but they were seeking a pretty large amount of time. On July 23rd that year, as part of a plea agreement, he pled guilty to all of the charges. This was supposed to be a um, change of venue hearing, but her family, all of Smith's family and friends were there, and he took that opportunity to plead guilty. This hearing was broadcasted over Kansas City's biggest tele television networks, so we went out to everyone. And this became a very big local case, but also a huge national case. So on September 16th, um, they found him guilty, of course, and he was sentenced to life in prison without parole for kidnapping, rape, and murder. Now in court, this scumbag took the opportunity to go ahead and apologize to Kelsey's family. It's just horrific. So Hall is incarcerated in Hutchinson Correctional Facility in Hutchinson, Kansas to this day. And there was a big controversy for Verizon Wireless for having that reluctancy to locate or help the law enforcement with that ping. So people were extremely upset that it took them as long as it did. So her parents being the amazing people that they did, they did not let Kelsey's life go without there being some sort of light at the end of the tunnel. This light happens to be the Kelsey Smith Act. This is a act which legally binds um, phone companies from being reluctant on releasing ping information. So this law is an act in 23 states, I believe, and this protects people. So when they go missing, they can someone can call um, and the police can go after that ping. They could have saved, they probably saved a lot of people with this act so that we're not reluctant anymore. We can go out and we can maybe intervene in a murder or a kidnapping. So this could have saved a lot of people, but it did save someone very close to home for Kelsey. So on February 15th in Lenexa, Kansas, pretty close to where all of this happened with Kelsey, a man stole a car, not knowing that a five month old baby was in the car as well. He ran down a pedestrian in a hit and run. Um, and a half an hour later, they got the phone ping that he was in a convenience store. The perpetrator fled and they never found out who it was. So that is still an open investigation, but they were able to save that baby based on the mom's phone that pinged while being in the front seat. So hopefully they find him and get him on hit and run charges and cat kidnapping, but 
they have not. But that infant's life could have been saved because of Kelsey's, Kelsey Smith's act. Now, like I said at the beginning of this video, Kelsey's story hit very hard for me. It is extremely scary. I mean, knowing that I could have been a victim, that someone in my family could be a victim of opportunity is so, so scary. It's random. You know, if you're being stalked, if you, you know, all of those things, they're equally as horrible, but you know what's coming and a random attack like this, you just, you don't, you don't know. I mean, Kelsey was casually buying something at Target and it was the last thing she did. I'm so glad that her parents decided to go through with that Kelsey Smith act. They are very brave and honorable and wonderful people. And I'm very glad that he got life in prison um, for what he did. He got caught, he got caught soon. So this definitely is a case where it's very sad, but a lot of good came out of that. Thank you for sitting and listening to Kelsey Smith's case. She is very important. Every single person who is missing, murdered, um, anything is important and they need their stories told as well. If you like my videos or liked this video or have been watching my videos, um, please consider um, subscribing to my channel so that you can get updates when I post so you don't miss a video and you can watch all of these amazing stories about these amazing people. Thank you so much for your time and thanks to Kelsey, we can now save people. So I will be back with another story next time. Thank you. Bye. Hey guys, um, thank you for watching. If you like this video or any of my other content, please click the subscribe button and the bell and the like button um, to help me with my content and my channel as it grows. Also follow me on social media platforms. Right now my biggest um, form of communication outside of YouTube is TikTok, so please add me on there and make some funny true crime content on there. So thank you guys for watching. Love you.